Welcome in to another edition of Gold and Black Radio. I'm your host, Derek Schultz. Welcome back from the bye week. Purdue getting back at it and still searching for answers and their first FBS win. They'll have a winnable game at home against Northwestern and a, a Wildcats team that shares some living space in the Big Ten cellar with them. Can this finally be the opportunity for Purdue to break through and, and get a Big Ten win on the ledger? We'll talk about that when we welcome on Tom Dienart to talk all about it and get a quarterback update in just a few moments. But first, a thank you to our sponsors, including Purdue Federal Credit Union, a proud partner of Purdue Athletics and the official credit card for Purdue fans. Boiler up. The East End Grill and Rippling Company, two distinctive bistros across the street from one another on the far end of Main Street, the perfect place for your next event. And the Whitaker Inn for unparalleled comfort and cuisine. Visit the Whitaker Inn. Let's welcome on Tom Dienart, who joins me for the first time in what feels like a couple of months here, Tom. But I don't know, maybe I'm just getting old and the time is passing a little bit slower to me. Um, we were talking about this off the air, but obviously the on-field product for Purdue football hasn't been super interesting. But I think something that is interesting and certainly something to watch for coming up this Saturday is, is this quarterback conundrum that the Boilers find themselves in, right? With Hudson Card and Ryan Brown, what's the latest there? And, and how do you see this playing out, coming out for this uh, noon kick against Northwestern at ross State Stadium? Yeah, we talked to Jason Simmons course the offensive analyst as well as ryan walters on monday derek and that was the first question out of the media's mouth what's going to happen at quarterback against northwestern and long story short they've got a plan to use both of them so there you go keeping northwestern on its toes my friend um of course that means hudson card obviously he's healthy right he missed the last two games in concussion protocol after getting hurt up at madison wisconsin Ryan Brown sort of caught the world on fire or set the world on fire at Illinois with that, you know, great second half and that 50 to 49 OT loss. They come back the next week and get shut out. How often you score 49 points once and then get shut out the next game? I was thinking about that today. But um, yeah, so you know, he brings he brings good things to the table, so does Hudson Cards. So um we'll see how they do deploy him, Derek. If this is a lot of uh, coach speak. If Hudson Card's going to be the guy all the time, if Ryan Brown's going to be the guy, if they do use them both, Derek, how will they use them both? I don't know. Um, but you, if you were to ask me, Derek Schultz, if you gave me a headset and said, I'm calling plays, who's my quarterback? I got to go with Hudson Card, right? Um, no disrespect to Ryan Brown, but I think we all can agree Hudson Card's probably the quarterback best equipped to try to get a win here Saturday. Let me present this hypothetical scenario to you, and we'll we'll put the headsets there on for, for Tom Dienhard here. <laughs> so a Hudson Card would be option one. That would be the one that you would go to. If you were choosing between either starting Ryan Brown or playing both quarterbacks, or where would you rank playing both quarterbacks on that list? So one, two, and three. If Hudson Card is your one, what's two and three? Hudson Card is my one, and I think I'm riding him. And I'm I'm spotting in Ryan Brown here and there, um, just as a so chance. play both. Yeah, play both, but but okay, not, but it still had still Hudson Card's game. Sure, May, maybe Ryan Brown gets eight snaps. Um, I bring Ryan Brown in on fourth and one or or third and three. I bring Ryan Brown in in the red zone, um, to try to accentuate his 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 ability as a runner and his size, and he can still throw the ball too. So maybe you can set a few things up with Ryan Brown to get you a first down or get you a touchdown in the red zone. So I'm still riding with Hudson Card, though, Derek. I mean, um, again, just we all know the experience favors him. He's, he's a much better, much more polished passer. And they, they, they said to us time and again, hey, if we had asked Hudson Card to do what Ryan Brown did at Illinois to run that same game plan, they said Hudson would have done just as well as Ryan Brown. So – I think Hudson's got to be the guy. And again, I would ride with Hudson and just spot in Ryan Brown. Yeah, and I'm not trying to be an apologist for Hudson Card because clearly when he was healthy and playing, the level of play was not up to where it needed to be. But I, I do think, Tom, that there were some extenuating circumstances there. I don't think Hudson Card was put in the best position to succeed. Let's just kind of put it at that in the first couple of games this season. Very politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> It is an election year. <laughs> I'm just going to say no, today, right? A week from today. Um, yeah, I'm not sure uh, if, if if they wanted Hudson Card to run that much earlier this year, and uh, for for maybe for for fear of him getting hurt, because maybe they didn't know what was behind Hudson Card. But I think he was mindful of that and maybe held the ball too long at times. 
Maybe there was a voice in the back of his head, and maybe it was the former offensive coordinator's voice. Hey, don't run if you don't have to. Again, I'm just making guesses here, but I think I agree with you. Um, um, Hudson's a terrific athlete, man. He's fast. He's quick. He's not as big as Ryan Brown. Uh, he's tough, though, too. So I think he can do what we saw Ryan do running the football, at least a reasonable facsimile. And like I said, um, he may not have the same personality as Ryan Brown, but you can lead a lot of different ways, Derek. You can lead by example. And uh, I think Hudson's a very well-respected guy. So he's, he's more than good enough for this offense. And I think more than good enough for Purdue to have a good chance to win this game Saturday. You're talking about the chance for them to win that game. Uh, is this perhaps the best and maybe final chance on the 2024 slate for Purdue to win a game? I'm looking at, you know, Vegas is Vegas, yeah. right? Mm. But it, it's essentially a pick with where we sit today while, while taping the show and Northwestern does have a Big Ten win. They did beat Maryland early in the year, but certainly the last three weeks, they have looked every bit of one of the worst teams in the Big Ten as well. Yeah, they've lost two in a row. They've lost four or five. They're struggling too, like like you said. I talked to a – we'll hear from my guest on, fr what, Friday, Dave Ennett, the play-by-play -play voice of Northwestern football. Their offense is a nep, Derek. Where have we heard that before? The big difference between Purdue and Northwestern is Northwestern's defense. It's, it's pretty salty, and I think it's it's much better than Purdue. So there you go. I think there's going to be challenges there from that NU defense. So and you're right. This is probably even having said that, I think this is the, this is Purdue's best shot. Everybody on the planet knows that, right? You look at the schedule with number three Penn State, number four Ohio State, what number thirteen IU, a trip to East Lansing, and you have this game over here on Saturday. So. Yeah, this 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 may be it unless there's a surprise down down the road for us. And you know, nobody expects a lot of wins in November, right, Derek? But uh, I think again, they they at least expect Purdue to be look competent and to be competitive. And you, you hate to settle for that, right? You want we want wins, but at this point, I think fans are, will settle for a team that looks like it's well coached, prepared, is giving good effort, and, and is competing to the fourth quarter, not getting blown out. So those are going to be some measuring sticks. At least I'm going to be keeping an eye out on here as, as we wade through the, this long month of November. Yeah, five games left, and three of them are against playoff contenders, and this is one of the yeah. few that's not. So you want Purdue to take advantage there. Uh, we'll talk more about the Boilermakers and also get a health outlook from Tom here in just a second, but wanted to go ahead and thank a couple more of our Golden Black Radio sponsors, including Sand Valley Resort. Celebrate all that the wilderness provides this fall and winter at Sand Valley. Experience everything from Thanksgiving dinner, curling and ice hockey to ice fishing and snowshoeing, and even the restorative benefits of a guided cold plunge in the frozen lakes. Start planning your next winter getaway by visiting sandvalleypursuits.com. Purdue Institute for Cancer Research also on board with us as well. They have a history of innovation and one goal for the future, defeat cancer. Purdue brings together world-class Boilermaker scientists from across the university, conducting cutting-edge research that uncovers new ways to prevent, diagnose, and treat cancer. With your support, Cancer Research Saves Lives. Join the fight and donate to Purdue Institute for Cancer Research today. And don't forget to sign up to become a member for Tom's work and all the best Purdue coverage right here at goldenblack.com. Uh, what's the injury update, Tom, from what you heard from Ryan Walters yesterday? Good. It's positive. Um, the big names, of course. Derek, we may finally see the debut of C.J. Smith. Can I get a moment of silence, please? <laughs> we need to pop asked, a bottle, maybe. <laughs> I didn't think he, he, he was, yeah, a hamstring injury in August in camp. And I said, oh, oh, here we go. A hamstring injury on a thoroughbred athlete. This could linger. I didn't think we'd see him at all. But here we are. At least we're going to see him. Uh, that's what everybody says. You know, he was dressed for the Oregon game, Derek. He was on the field in full gear going through warm-ups, but obviously didn't play. They've said a few times, he's going to play. So here we go. Uh, he could be a big addition. We'll see what the hype is all about. We know about his speed. Can he, can he can that translate to productivity on the field? So expect to see him out there. And then the other guy, Nylon Green, cornerback, got hurt again, missed the Oregon game. He, he, he was in the two deep this week, and it sounds like Ryan was hopeful that he was going to play. So um, they can use all their bodies in that second if they, if they can. So those are the big names to know. Again, C.J. Smith, Nylon Green, two Georgia guys. And uh, Purdue's going to need probably both of them if they want to have a good chance to knock off a Northwestern team that, that, that as we said, is, is about as desperate as Purdue is right now for, to taste victory. You had a really interesting uh, post earlier this week during the buy on goldenblack.com, just kind of going through Purdue's 19 transfer portal editions and mm. not, not grading them per se, but just kind of giving a synopsis on, on how they performed. And, 
you know, they have found a couple, right, that have come in and fulfilled roles for them, notably on the offensive line with DJ Winfield and, and Corey Stewart. Um, but overall, how would you say that this class has performed? Is it fair to say, whether it be from underperformance or from injury, it's been a disappointing group? I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be kind. I'm, I'm going to say it's a mixed bag. I like okay. It. I always like saying mixed bag. <laughs> um. You mentioned two of the guys, the offensive linemen from the New Mexico kid and the, the Ball State kid. They've been solid. They started every game on the O-line. Kendrick Breedlove, the Colorado transfer cornerback, he's been one of the best guys. They've had three sure. INTs. And then two of the best have been specialists, the punter, you know, Keelan Kremen from Mississippi State and the long snapper um, from, from William & Mary um, have, been, have been very good. So, yeah, but overall for 19 guys, the impact has been minimal. I have had pointed out to me that a lot of these guys – are we going to be able to come back next year? And typically, second year in programs, you're typically better. So my point being that, and the point was stressed to me, hey, you know, these guys, they're going to be back next year, and they, they should be better. So, you know, we shall see. But overall, I think typically, Derek, you know, when you when you bring in a portal guy, you're not thinking about the next year. Yeah, Portal guys, <laughs> you want now, right? So anyway, I, I, I'm pointing that out to point that out. But by and large, yeah, it's been a group that's, that I don't think is delivered like like a lot of people thought. I mean, look at the pundits, Derek. Go back when these these classes were signed, or at least um, uh, thought to be signed. You know, Purdue was rated pretty highly, so a lot of people thought a lot of this group, and it has yet to really develop this year. But maybe some of these guys will really come to the fore next year uh, uh, again. But who knows where anybody's going to be next year, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. Um... It is glass half full to say, hey, maybe they can squeeze a second year out of it. But the glass half empty side is, let's say, hypothetically, Purdue ends up, God forbid, a one and 11 team or, or maybe even a two and 10 team. Yeah. You know, how, how much are you having to dip into the portal just from the attrition that comes from that? Yeah, that's that. I mean, I mean, there's all kinds of speculation on the future. Ryan Walters, what would that do to the roster? You, you alluded to guys could leave in the portal. And then you got to shop wholesale again in the portal, maybe if you have a new coach. Who knows? I mean, they're just the way, the way this season's gone. To even try to think beyond tomorrow is impossible for for Purdue, I think. And that's why you just got to take care of what's right in front of you, Purdue. You can't you can't get caught up on scenarios on what could or couldn't happen at the end of November. You have to just take care. Of it. That's good advice for everybody in life, right? Just take care of what's in front of you and do the next right thing, and it'll unfold like it's supposed to. So. I know people don't like that, but it's, a, it's an uncomfortable time for Purdue football fans. And it uh, wasn't supposed to be like this, but here we are. And Derek, bless our souls, we, we've talked about it uh, for a few months here. we got a few a few more weeks to talk about it, and then we'll see where it goes. The story is still being authored, right? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, my, my head is starting to feel like the pumpkin that's on my doorstep that's like half eaten by squirrels and starting to get all mushy uh, from from getting about halfway through this Purdue football season because it's been, obviously, it's been a trying time, uh, I, I think, for everybody involved. And, and that includes the players, too. And you you hope, um, and, and look, I know they're not going to go to a bowl game and they're not going to be able to achieve anything that they wanted to achieve this year at, at this point. But you just hope for Saturday that maybe there is one positive, right, that can that can come forward and, and you're hoping for that win against Northwestern and um, hoping for an afternoon to feel good about yourself there at, uh, at Ross age stadium. Tom, appreciate all the analysis. Uh, we will talk to you again coming up here on Friday. Looking forward to it. Thank you. I appreciate your time, Derek. Be good, buddy. That's our pal, Tom Deanhart. And that's our show for this Tuesday here on golden black radio. Thanks so much for joining us. Also appreciate, of course, the sponsors that make the show possible. Purdue Federal Credit Union, the official credit card for Purdue fans. East End Grill and Rippling Company, two distinctive bistros across the street from one another on the far end of Main Street in Lafayette. The Whitaker Inn, this Midwestern oasis, perfect for a relaxing staycation or a weekend getaway. Escape from the ordinary at the Whitaker Inn. The Sand Valley Resort, celebrate all that the wilderness provides this fall and winter at Sand Valley. Start planning your next winter getaway by visiting Sand Valley Pursuits. Dot com. And finally, our friends at the Purdue Institute for Cancer Research doing very, very important work. The Purdue Institute for Cancer Research has a history of innovation and one goal for the future, defeat cancer. Join the fight and donate to the Purdue Institute for Cancer Research today. And again, sounds like a broken record, but don't forget to sign up if you're not already to become a member of goldenblack.com. Knucklehead Central, Tom Deanhart, basketball analysis from our buddy Brian Newbert, and of course, Carm, Allen, and the rest of the uh, gold and black crew. We will return for Friday's show with a more in-depth preview of Northwestern. But until then, enjoy your Halloween and enjoy the rest of your week. This has been Golden Black Radio Tuesday edition right here at goldenblack.com.